In this video, we will automate finding various chart patterns using Python. The patterns we will look at are 1. Head and shoulders 2. Inverse head and shoulders 3. Rectangle pattern 4. Triples pattern By the end of this video, you will know how to detect them yourself. In his book, Encyclopedia of Chart Patterns, Thomas Bolkowski says, To knowledgeable investors, chart patterns are not squiggles on a price chart. They are the footprints of the smart money. To use the words of Bolkowski, we detect chart patterns because we want to follow the footprints of smart money. Smart money knows when to buy and it knows when you sell. Several algorithms can be used to identify chart patterns. Here are some I've come across. Pivot points. Argrel extrema. Kernel regression. Perceptually important points. Directional change. Rolling window. Clustering algorithms. We will use the pivot points method to identify the chart patterns. This method is from code trading. You can check out his channel. It is the simplest and straight-to-the-point method compared to other methods. If you want us to do a comparison among the different methods, then please let us know in the comments section. The intuition behind pivot points is that there are focal points of interest. Given a time series, these are points that you would visually use for market structure. The blue points are the pivot points. Here is an example from real data. We will use these points to detect the different patterns. Let's start with the head and shoulders pattern. The head and shoulders is a famous reversal chart pattern that predicts that the trend will change from bullish to bearish. The pattern has four parts. 1. After an extended bullish trend, the price increases to a high before falling to form a trough. 2. The price rises once more to create a second high that is significantly higher than the first peak before falling once more. 3. A third increase merely brings the price to its first peak level before it starts to fall once more. 4. The neckline is drawn at the two troughs. The neckline can be descending, flat, or ascending. So in the algo, we need to make sure we consider this. Here is the function used to find the head and shoulders patterns. The function takes a data frame and the look-back period as parameters. The function loops over all points in the data and checks if a head and shoulders pattern occurs at that point. For a given point, we find the following. 1. Maximus 2. Minimus 3. Indexes of Minimus and Maximus 4. Count of Minimus and Maximus before and after the given point. Once we have the above, we run a regression on the Minimus. This is for the neckline of the pattern. Here are the conditions that identify the head and shoulders pattern. By fine-tuning the values, you will get different results. Here is a sample of the results. Next up is the inverse head and shoulders chart pattern. The inverse head and shoulders predict that the trend will change from bearish to bullish. The pattern has four parts. One. After an extended bearish trend, the price decreases to a low before rising to form a peak. 2. The price falls once more to create a second low that is significantly lower than the first trough before rising once more. 3. A third decrease merely brings the price to its first trough level before it starts to rise once more. 4. The neckline is drawn at the two peaks. As you might imagine, the code for the inverse head and shoulders pattern is similar to the head and shoulders. Here it is. We run a regression on the maximus and not minimus this time around. This is for the neckline of the pattern. Here are the conditions that identify an inverse head and shoulder pattern. Here is a sample of the results. The triple patterns has two parts, triple tops and triple bottoms. The triple tops predict that the trend will change from bullish to bearish. The triple bottoms predicts that the trend will change from bearish to bullish. We have two separate functions, one for finding triple bottoms and the other which finds triple tops. Let's look at the triple bottom function. The triple tops function is similar. The first part of the function is similar to the head and shoulders code. Here is the condition that has to be met for a point to be considered a triple bottom. It does look intimidating, but it can be divided into three parts. One, it checks if certain conditions are met to the left and right of the lowest minima. Two. Make sure that the distance between the minimus is within a certain range. And three, check if the neckline meets certain conditions. 
The triple top function follows similar logic as you can see here. Here is a sample of the results. A rectangle pattern is a continuation chart pattern and occurs when a market trend has paused for a moment before it breakouts. The price gets bounded within parallel support and resistance lines. After the consolidating period, the price will move in the original direction of the trend. There are two types of rectangle patterns, a bearish one and a bullish one. The code for the pattern is more involved compared to what we've seen so far. The code focuses on finding support and resistance levels. At each sample we have multiple levels, we narrow it down to one pair by using the nearest pair based on length. Of course, other methods, but we choose this one because of its simplicity. We also need to decide if we will look for support and resistance levels using overlapping or non-overlapping samples. In the overlapping case, we would slide the window by a certain period and then estimate the new levels. On the other hand, in the non-overlapping case, we estimate the support and resistance levels in adjacent samples, like this. The code we present can take care of both cases. Here is the code. We start by finding the period of interest. Once we have that, we get the support and resistance levels. In this case, there will be multiple levels. So we use this function to find the best pair of resistance and support levels. If we found the pair, then we save the plot. The next sample period will depend on whether we specified an overlapping or non-overlapping sample selection. Here is a sample of the results. If you enjoyed this video, we have more similar type videos on your channel. You can check them out. Thank you for watching.